Uh, Bubba is back. Um, Greg is back. Uh, as I said, the, the whole gang is here. And guess what? Presidential candidate Dr. Ben Carson is also back uh, on the Rick and Bubba show. Has been with us uh, about three or four times in the past. Uh, but the first time that he comes on the show as an official presidential candidate. Uh, Dr. Carson, back, welcome back to the show. Thank you. I always enjoy being with you guys. You know, we've had you on so much. We feel like we're buddies, even though right. you really don't know us. But we feel right. that way. Absolutely. No question about it. Yeah, I'll say things like, well, you know, Ben said. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right, so now that you've announced and now that you're into this, uh, have you had second thoughts? What have I done? <laughs> right. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, I'm, I'm even more committed to trying to, to save our country. And as I r- go around, you know, different states virtually every day and see the reaction of the people and, and the hope that somehow we can get out of this morass and uh, and once again claim the greatness that th- this country deserves. Well, it, the, you said it, and we've talked about this a lot, and we talk to the American people every day, and you're getting to talk to the American people every day. First of all, you you spent time in the private sector. Uh, you know, uh, that, that I think is grossly needed uh, in, in, in Washington. We, we haven't had much of that in the last uh, six years. And, and of course, uh, there's a certain pride that Americans have lost uh, and and I think you hit on it. They they feel like w- that they've lost hope that the country is something that we should be ashamed of. Uh, that uh, you know our um, our reputation around the world is, is not what it once was, and the things that we used to hold dear and celebrate we're now told we should be ashamed of. And uh, yeah. and and you're taking uh, all those things head on. Absolutely, and, and there's so much propaganda, you know, that's perpetrated. You know, starting with with the youngsters, even in preschool, and we're so busy giving away our values and principles for the sake of political correctness that I'm not sure that a lot of people even know who we are. The Bible says, "Without a vision, the people perish." Yep. When you don't know who you are and where you're going, chaos ensues, and that's what we're seeing right now. The can-do attitude is being replaced with the "What can you do for me?" attitude. But I don't think it's too late to change it. I really don't. Uh, it's a matter of, of, you know, being able to engage in discussions. You know, political correctness keeps people from discussing things. You can't say that. You can't even talk about that. And in the meantime, they just undermine the fabric of the society. And that's why we have to resist it. And we have to begin to talk. You know, it's like when people get divorced. You know, they stop talking. The next thing you know, their their mate is the devil incarnate. And, of course, they're, they're really not, but, you know, it builds up in your mind. You're not talking to them. You're getting in corners. You're tossing hand grenades at each other. How do you ever have time to actually stop and solve your problems? Dr. Carson, I know as you've got into this, you've looked at various issues. And, you know, when the rubber actually hits the road, is there an issue or two that you think if you go in the White House, you've got to tackle first, and how would you do it? Yeah, well, I think there are three things that threaten to destroy us fairly quickly. Uh, our divisiveness, and, you know, we need to, to re- reemphasize what we have in common and not what separates us and make sure that people know that it's okay to disagree. But when you disagree, have a discussion. Don't get in your corners and throw hand grenades at each other. The other thing is our fiscal irresponsibility. And a lot of people know about the $18.5 trillion national debt, but few people know what I'm talking about when I talk about the fiscal gap, you know, the unfunded liabilities versus right. the receipts going forward. That's a much bigger number yeah. and threatens to completely undermine our financial structure in the near future. And then our failure – to take our place on the world stage in leadership. Every day that we fail to do that is going to cost us money and lives. And we've got to do it because our place is being filled in by others who are creating a, a network that is not going to be useful to us. In fact, you know, the jihadists want to destroy us. Yeah, and, and it's almost like people don't don't really want to hear that. And, and we were discussing, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, uh, this week we were talking with a uh, a friend of ours about why is it that this country seems to give Islam a pass on the things that they openly, uh, uh, you know, say they are, and and you know, you you watch this bunch of ISIS, they say they're coming right out of the Quran, but if Christians do anything, then of course that's completely demonized, and 
and this was just a theory, is uh, the person that was talking said, well, I believe it's because the left of our country sees Christians standing in the way of, of, of what they want to implement in this country, and they think, well, this ISIS thing, that's over in another part of the world. That doesn't really stand in our way. Uh, but uh, I, I think that, that there may be some truth to that. Uh, there's definite truth to it. I mean, uh, those who, who would like to see a one-world order know that the United States is the only thing that stands in the way. And uh, and some of their uh, leaders historically have said, you know, in order to get the United States out of the way, we have to bring them down. And you can't bring them down unless you attack their two strongest pillars, and that is their families and their faith. Well, what has been under attack for the last few decades? Just think about it. Yeah. Oh, uh, it, it's getting stranger by the day. Rick and I were just talking the other day, the last 10 years, how our society has changed uh, to a point that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. But, uh, Dr. Carson, uh, you, you were talking about defense and ISIS. As commander-in-chief, uh, how, do you, how do you take on the ISIS situation today? I mean, you go in, what do you do? Well, first of all, you have to to be willing to acknowledge who they are and what right, they're doing. Right, right. That's step one. <laughs> That's step one. And I think you use every resource you have available to you, you know, military and economic and social pressure. Um, you know, there there is nothing that's off the table. And you you can't just sort of sit back and wait for them. You have to take the war to them. So there have been multiple times, you know, even a couple of years ago, we knew exactly where they were and had the ability to destroy them while they were in the desert. Did we do it? No. And, uh, you know, I think we have to, you know, make alliances with the Peshmerga and some of the others who have shown themselves to be reliable. And we simply have to take the war to them. You know, right now they're, they're trying to take over several parts of Syria. We know where they are. And we have a military that is extremely capable if we actually uh, gave them a job and let them do it. All right, shifting gears just a little bit, because I know we're about to run out of time, and, and th these tie together. You're going to be speaking at the Men's Grin Iron Conference. I I've had the honor of speaking there three times in the, the last six years, and it's fantastic. When you look at a society uh, or a culture or, uh, you know, w when you see it falling apart, you usually find at the heart of that the men have either gone away or they've been deemed useless. Uh, you know, they've been neutered, for lack of a better term. And, and and I know because political correctness says that I'm mostly white, I can't comment on the black community, uh, but but I don't buy into that so because I think you, you still can and I don't know what Absolutely. my hair I don't know what my heritage is. I may be a mix of all sorts of things, but 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 I guess I'm mostly white. But at the end of the day, I still know that when you look in the African American community, you find that most of the problems are tied back to the men have abandoned their families. Uh, or if, if they're in the family, they're, they're not getting the job done. And there are exceptions to that. I'm speaking in general. But, but yeah. I, I notice when somebody like you steps forward, who's African-American, who has, has not complained, has, has, has dealt with the road that you were dealt, and I don't think that it's the same road for everybody. It never has been in this country. But you didn't use that as an excuse, and you had access to the things this country offers to be well-educated, highly successful, and now running for president, but yet you're not deemed a hero to the to the African American community because of your political leanings. Um, and, it, it, yeah. it, talk about that for a minute. Well, you know, I I remember when I went to the to the Sharpton conference, and uh, a lot of people said, "You can't go there. That's horrible." Um, and I must say, when he introduced me, the reception was somewhat cool. <laughs> but uh, but when I but when I by the time I finished standing ovation, right. people wanted autographs and photographs, um, and I talked about the things that allow people to move from a state of dependency to independence, and how to turn dollars over in order to create wealth, and how to reach back and bring others along, and the deleterious effects of out of wedlock births and break down of the family and government programs that actually encourage the breakdown of the family. Maybe that wasn't the intention, but certainly that is the effect. And we need to be looking at these kinds of things and altering them because they hurt us all because we're all in the same boat. Part of the boat sinks, the rest of it eventually goes down too.
So you'll be addressing men at this men's conference from all walks of life. Uh, what's your message to them for, as, as a last comment before we let you go? Well, my, my address to them is how essential men are. You know, there's been a lot of denigrating of the role of men in an attempt to elevate women. I think you can elevate both, <laughs> to Amen. be honest Amen. with you. And, and in fact, you know, that's what a strong family unit is. They both play very important roles, and many studies have shown us that an intact family is the best environment in which to raise our children. And when we have strong families, that provides the fabric for a strong society. Amen. That's how we're going to – if we want to build America back, we've got to build the family back, no doubt. Absolutely. Dr. Carson, thanks for being with us. I know you're in high demand right now. Uh, we're honored that you always find a way to work us in. And, uh, always a pleasure. No, we're praying Thank for you. You keep fighting a good fight. All right. Thank you so much. Take uh, care. Thank you, Doc. Dr. Ben Carson, presidential candidate, also speaking Father's Day weekend at the Men's Gridiron Conference. Go to gridironmen.org if you don't already have your tickets before it sells out. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.